Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center and today we're talking about the Foff Ambition 620. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make buttonholes. Now, if you're a new sewer, buttonholes may seem like an intimidating idea, but they don't have to be. This makes beautiful buttonholes quite easily. So I'm going to show you how. So to start with, uh, when you turn on your machine, now I've got it set up for buttonholes, but when you turn on your machine, it's going to be right here at one. You have a variety of buttonholes to choose from. For instance, if you chose 27, that's going to give you a buttonhole with rounded edges. I like 23 because it's just a nice standard buttonhole that's good for pretty much any fabric. So, nice square unbuttonhole. And then the foot that you want to use is this foot number five. That's going to uh, help them uh, make it so that the machine can form the buttonhole correctly. So to start with, we want to take that foot off of there, put that away in the accessory tray. And then when you have chosen the correct button that you want to put on to, to form the buttonhole, you need to take one of those buttons, push this up here, put that button right down in there. And notice how that determine this distance here. That's going to help the machine know how long to make that buttonhole. So we put that under here and also make sure that you have your um, IDT up out of the way here. I'll show you that again. Say I was sewing and I had it down. Make sure you pull it down, pull it back and get it out of the way because you need to have that out of the way for sewing buttonholes. Get that right on there. Now to start with we need to put this thread through the stitch hole in the foot. And I'm going to show you an easy way to do that. So put it just any old random piece of fabric there. Do needle down, needle up. And notice I didn't hold that thread tail. I just let it slide right through there. And there we've got it threaded right through there. Okay, now we want the thread tail to the right. And that's because when you sew on your buttonhole, like on the edge of a shirt or something, you're going to have the body of your shirt over here and just the edge right here. So having that tail to the right makes the most sense. Okay, and then when you are sewing your garment, oftentimes you'll use interfacing between the two layers, and that's fine, you can do that. But I like forming a buttonhole placket down the front of a shirt using the fabric itself. So I'll cut my fabric in, uh, when I cut out my pattern in such a way that I can fold this over twice. So that gives me three layers. You don't want to just use two layers of thin fabric for a buttonhole because that doesn't give it quite as much support and you won't be happy with the result. So have three layers or two layers of fabric and one layer of interfacing. Okay, next we're going to mark our buttonhole. Now I like this friction pen. This erases with heat. Now it actually changes to a pale white with heat. So if you're using dark fabric, for one thing, a dark pen was not going to show up on a dark fabric. But if you had marked on dark, darker fabric and then you go to iron it or use the, the little the friction eraser at the end, it would give you a pale white mark. So whatever marking tool you are using, and make sure it's not like pencil or a ballpoint pen. It should be something that's meant for fabric. But whatever marking pen you're using, I like to make sure that the marks are going to be covered up by the stitches. To give you an example, <clears throat> okay, so here we've got marked right here where we want the buttonhole and where we want it to begin. The buttonhole is going to start forming at the beginning on this end and form backwards and end there. This here is going to be covered up by that little bar tack right here at the end. So I don't have huge big marks, I just have enough so that I can see where it is. Plus you've got a clear foot here so you can kind of see where that is. The red marks that are on the foot are where you're going to line up the marks on your fabric. <clears throat> if you need to, you can lift that a little bit higher to, because the, uh, the foot itself has these little grippies that kind of grip your fabric, help you keep everything nice and stable. <clears throat> I'm going to move that around until I get that just right, right under there. You want the center long line going even with that long line, not where the needle is, but where the mark is on the foot. And then we want to make sure that this is parallel to the side of the foot. You could have everything perfectly matched up here, but if yours is a little cockeyed, guess what? That buttonhole is going to be cockeyed too. So 
line it up there and then check over to here, make sure everything's right. As Soon as you have that on lined up, pull the buttonhole foot uh, lever down, the buttonhole lever. It's gotta go behind this piece of plastic there. This is gonna tell the machine when to stop doing a zigzag on one side and when to do the bar tack and do the zigzag on the other side. That is important to make sure you have that down there. Okay, to start and stop, you can use the start stop button or you can press on your foot pedal. I like the start stop because when it gets to the end of the buttonhole, it's gonna stop by itself. I don't have to push that button again. So I'm gonna get it started, hanging onto the thread for the first few stitches and then I can let go of that thread. That also keeps that thread tail out of the way so it doesn't get all sewn into the buttonhole. So it's, what it does is it does a, a short stitch going backwards and then it comes forward. That way both sides of the buttonhole are sewn in the same direction. And it makes a nice little tie off right there at the end. And you hear that noise? That is its automatic cutting. So now all I have to do, lift that out. And if I had several buttonholes to make, just go on to the next marked buttonhole, do the same thing again. It's very easy. Not a lot of steps involved here. Okay, and at this point, then you can just take your seam ripper, you can cut your thread tails right to the, um, right to the fabric pretty much. And then you take your seam ripper and you cut this here. Um, I like to put a pin at the end just to make sure I don't accidentally cut through that uh, bar tack there, but that's how you open your buttonhole. So buttonholes are pretty easy on this machine. I invite you to try that. If you need to watch my video again, feel free to do that. I've tried to explain it as the best I can. Um, if you have comments or questions, you can leave those in the area down below. If you found this video to be helpful, give us a thumbs up. We have lots of other videos that you can watch here on our Montevilla YouTube channel. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Bye.